Statistics and Excel. Correlation large data sets focus on Z-score relationship part number two. Get ready, taking a deep breath, holding it in for 10 seconds, looking forward to a smooth, soothing Excel. Here we are in Excel. If you don't have access to this workbook, that's okay because we basically built this from a blank worksheet, but we started in a prior presentation. So if using a blank worksheet, you may want to begin back there. However, if you do have access to this workbook, there's three tabs down below. Example, practice blank. Example, in essence, answer key. Practice tab having pre-formatted cells so you can get to the heart of the practice problem. The blank tab is where we started with a blank worksheet that had just our starting data sets on it and where we will be continuing this time quick recap of what we're looking at we're thinking about the correlation relationship two different data sets to see if there's a mathematical relationship or correlation between them if there is a mathematical relationship the data points are moving in some kind of format together in other words the next logical question would be is there a cause and effect relationship and if there's a cause and effect relationship the next logical question would be what is the causal factor and this time we've been looking at height and weight data. We had more data than we've seen in prior practice problems. So there's 25,000 lines of data in our practice set for both the heights and the weights. We calculated the mean standard deviation. We noted that both of them seem like they conform to a bell-shaped curve uh, type of scenario, which doesn't necessarily mean there's a correlation but might give us some indication of what's going on between them. That would make sense given the fact that we're looking at things that are kind of nature related, heights, lengths of things in nature, for example, often having a bell-shaped type of curve. We then got our mathematical formula. We did our, our table that we've seen in the past to calculate the correlation manually or with Excel, you know, but in, in a manual kind of format. And then we also did it to double check it with the uh, data tool set. And then we also get, used the data tool set to give us the general data for uh, the two data sets. Now, noting that both of these seem to conform to a bell-shaped curve, we now are going to say, let's plot this thing out uh, to the bell curve and then look at the z-scores related to the two bell curves to see if that could give us a better understanding of the z-scores. So, I'm going to select these two data sets again. We're going to select from uh, A to B. So, we can say Control c a to B and then control C so we can copy and then we'll put that in the double A cell so I'll put them in double A and control V pasted it down and make a skinny Z let's make a skinny Z and that's going to be our starting data now I'm just going to copy over the same calculation as well that we did for the mean and standard deviation I'm just going to copy this stuff I'll put it in the same relationship to these cells because there's no absolute references it should paste and pull in the right information so i'm going to say Control v and then if i double click it's pulling in the right data that looks good let's make a skinny ac here and then we're going to plot this out uh, as a bell curve so using our norm.dist so i'm going to use x h and then p of x and we'll say this is for for h I, I should probably say h and w but i'll just do it that way <laughs> and so i'm going to plot these out as we did in the prior section when we looked at uh, bell curves so i'm going to go a uh, home tab let's go to the font group let's make this black let's make it white and let's center it and then let's say that we're going to take it standard deviations number of standard deviations I'm looking at the heights here so I could start at like zero and then go up in inches from zero up to the highest height but that's probably too much data we don't need that uh, much data in it so let's just take it four standard deviations up and four standard deviations below as has been our custom so I'm going to say four standard deviations this is going to be for the height and this is going to be for the weight these are my headers let's make that a header tab home tab font group black white we'll center it 
And then we're going to say that we have a lower X and the upper X. And I should probably be using H and W, but <laughs> we see what we're doing here. We're going to say lower and upper. Maybe I should do that. I should just say this is H and this is W. Uh, and so we'll just say this is H and this is going to be P of H, let's say. And then I'll say, okay, so four standard deviations, this equals the mean minus the standard deviation, 1.9 uh, times four. So I'm gonna say, okay. And so that's gonna be my lower point. This equals the mean times uh, one point, actually the mean plus, 1.9 times 4. That's going to be our upper point. And when I do uh, the weights, I'll do the same thing over here. The lower point is going to be equal to the mean minus the standard deviation times 4. And the upper point is going to be the mean times the standard deviation, I'm sorry, plus the standard deviation times 4. So 4 standard deviations up and below for the weights and the heights so now let's so i'm on the heights right now so that means i don't need to go to zero inches i'm going to start at just 60 we'll round it down to 60 inches and then i'm going to go up to 75 inches so i'm going to go 60 61 i'll go inch by inch here we're going to inch our way up inching our way up to 70 let's go to 76 inches inching our way up to 76 inches and so there we have it. And then the P of H is going to be our norm.dist. So this equals norm.dist function we saw in a prior presentation because we're going to approximate the data with like a smooth curve, like with a bell shape. Uh, so we're going to say this is going to be the X, which is that right there. We're going to say comma. The next argument is the mean, which is going to be that 67.99 F4 on the keyboard, dollar sign before the letter and number, comma, standard deviation here. F4 on the keyboard, dollar sign before the letter and number, comma. Should it be cumulative? I'm going to say no because we're just using that one point. Closing it up and enter. And then let's percentify it. Home tab, number group, per